Hello, and thank you for joining me for this week's episode of U.S. Dronecast. My guest this week is Stuart Smith, CEO and founder of The Droning Company, a platform designed to connect drone pilot with a variety of drone work in their area. As a professional guitarist for some well-known rock band, Stuart will talk about his passion for drone and why he decided to launch The Droning Company. He'll also explain the uniqueness of his platform and how they help drone pilots generate more revenue. Now, before we jump right in, don't forget, AZ Drone Fest will be held on October 7th in Phoenix, Arizona. In order to attend, you must register at azdronefest.com. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Now, let's jump right into this week's episode with our guest, Stuart Smith. Welcome to US Dronecast, a podcast dedicated to drones, aerial cinematography, safety, commercial, and recreation. So get ready for engaging discussions, insightful interviews, and expert insights from top-notch professionals in the drone industry. Subscribe now and follow us on social. Hey, Stuart, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time today to be here. Yeah, well, Chris, is looking forward to it. Hey, so talk to me and uh, about how you like your background, because you you didn't start in the drone business. So talk to me about your previous career or your actually current career too. Yeah, well, I've been a guitarist all my life. I was originally classically trained, and uh, then uh, discovered rock and roll by some friends of my parents taking me to a, a Deep Purple concert, and that turned me onto rock. And uh, then when I was 19 met Richie Blackmore from Deep Purple, became best friends, and uh, he sort of mentored me in the business. And uh, went on to play with uh, Keith Emerson. I uh, played with a ton of bands in Europe, but moved to the States, uh, played with Keith Emerson, and uh, had uh, uh, with Sweet, if you remember, did Ballroom Blitz, Fox on the Run, Love is Like Oxygen. And then my own band, Heaven and Earth, and uh, we brought out five albums with them. About three years ago, we brought out our fifth album, uh, which did uh, really well in the press. And we had a world tour planned. And we rehearsed and everything else, and then uh, got cancelled due to COVID. Um, so I thought, well, I know, supporting that most expensive creature in the world, a teenage daughter, I can't sit around doing nothing all for a year and a half. Um, and I just, uh, I, I've been flying drones for a couple of years just for fun. I thought, well, maybe I'll just go out as a drone pilot. I enjoy doing it. Um, and it's something that can be done during the pandemic. And um, uh, I looked at all these job agencies out there. I talked to other drone pilots. I looked at these job agencies. And uh, I was amazed at the amount of commission they were taking. I mean, something as simple as a roofing inspection, uh, which goes for about $250 out here in California. Um, they were paying the pilots like $70 to travel 100 miles. And a lot of it was the young pilots' fault. They were bidding lower and lower. So I thought, well, I can come up with a better business model. So what we did is we formed the droning company where pilots pay us $10 a month to have a profile on our page, which is searchable by the public looking for tired drone pilots. And when they find the one they want, they just say, I like this guy to hit contact. And they get the pilot's phone number and email address, and they contact the pilot directly. The pilot makes his own deal. We don't take commissions. So, And it just took off like a rocket. And along the way, we morphed it into a – magazine dedicated to the industry so since then i've learned more about the drone industry i could ever imagine <laughs> i bet do you still have time to play or are you just now working on the in the drone company the droning company yeah there's a yeah i do i do play uh most of the time i'm not doing tours at the moment uh i'm writing for a new album and i go out and sit in with friends this, when friends come to town and they say hey we're playing this place do you want to come and sit in for a few songs i I love doing that because there's no hassle. I just turn up with the guitar, plug in, play, and have a few drinks, and that's it. That's like the best combo right there. That's good. Yeah. That's, so because when we do a, when we do a show, the whole day is dedicated to that. We fly in, you go to the radio station, do an interview, check into your hotel, go to the sound check, come back, have something to eat, go and do the show, and then so this is great where I can just. Take, walk in with my guitar, plug in, that's it. Don't deal with anything. I'm telling you, freelance, man, that's the best right there. <laughs> so you said you'd, you'd flown uh, drones for a couple of years. Like, what attracted you to drones in the first place? Well, my father was a jet fighter pilot in the Royal Air Force, and that's all I ever wanted to do. I, I, was, I started playing guitar at like seven and a half years old with classical lessons. I was just good at it. I uh, never thought I'd be, have it as a career. And then I went on to college, and uh, then the RAF said, well, your father's son will take you on, gave me the medical, said, oh, you're colorblind, you can't fly. 
I never knew. I mean, I'm red, green, colorblind, which affects 76% of all males. But you don't, some like I didn't know it because red, green, I mean, I can tell red and green apart. I can't just pass the Ishihara cards, which are the circle of dots about this big. By the third page where there's an eight, I see a three. So technically I'm colorblind. So they're not going to let me in in the cockpit of a $30 million jet fighter. So the next and, best uh, thing was a like, drone. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> And so, especially when you got the goggles and you're actually in the drone, and so it's kind of great. Where, what's but, your uh, favorite type of drone? You mentioned FPV. Is that where you like to fly, or where do you normally fly? No, no, I'm not an FPV. I'm not that good. No, I, and I mean, I was I was seriously getting reasonably good on the drone, but then I just concentrated on the droning company. So there was there was no time for me to go out and fly anymore. This is a full time job. I'm working twice as hard as I did in the music industry. Yeah, but you still have a teenage daughter. So <laughs> Oh yeah. So you you said that they kind of took off. Talk to me about um the response that you're getting from pilots about finding your platform, utilizing your platform. What what is what has it been like? It's been good. I mean the the problem with that we're running about is not enough pilots know about us at the moment. So every time we 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 it's starting to pick up But pilots come when we approach pilots, we say, "Are you familiar with our company?" They say, "No." What do you do? And then we we tell them we don't take commissions, and this is how we get you work and everything. And so it's it's uh, it's getting there. Slow building process, but it's uh, just the hours you put in. Yeah, no, I I hear you, and, and you know we see a lot of um, I don't I don't even want to call them hobbyists because they're they're really good pilots, but they haven't figured out a way to to make a living with their drones. Uh, and so th this is the perfect platform where they can um, they can receive some of those jobs. And so, yeah, I, what, do you get all kind of different pilots or do, have you seen some kind of uh, a, a prototype or, or, or stereotype of pilots? Not really. I mean, it, there's, we get the real professional guys who've got uh, sort of these enterprise drones and uh, doing LiDAR and 3D mapping and this kind of thing so from the guys that have just bought their first drone past their FAA Part 107 and doing roofing and real estate. To, but the smart ones out there, and most of these guys are pretty smart, but they have to be to pass the Part 107 in the first place. Um, the sm smart ones are basically they're doing the job, saving their money, taking courses in LiDAR, 3D mapping, thermal, and then buying the equipment necessary to do that and moving into jobs where they're making you know, two grand a day. So yeah. These guys. Yeah. So, no, I, there's uh, jobs out there. You're right. And it's, it's just an issue of connecting the two. Yeah. And what I do is I always, um, when a pilot signs up, I always give them a call because generally there's always something missing from their profile. So I send them, I give them a call and say, hey, thanks for joining us. And this is uh, um, uh, what... Uh, I'm going to send you an article which I wrote on how to create a good profile to get your jobs. And I encourage pilots to, um, you know, talk to other pilots, go put, type in their area on the on the droning company and see which other pilots are in the area and reach out to them and develop a network within your area. Because that way, if someone can't get a job, they've got a job, they're double booked and they, it, the job has to be done today, they can pass it off and vice versa. Um, so I always recommend them to do that. Yeah, no, for sure. And then you 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 mentioned that the the website is now kind of like a magazine. I mean, it's full of information. So, talk to me about some of the other things that's on the platform for for like resources. Well, there's so, there's so, uh, so I mean, there's basically we've got the the educational articles, which are not only provided by us, but uh, organizations like Embry Riddle and Warren County. Um, but uh, I mean, we have informative articles on which are the best beginner drones best uh how to get drone jobs how to pass your part 107 and um and so we cover we cover every aspect and um and then we get into sort of deeper things like the the enterprise drones like drones like dragonfly that have got the the commander and getting a the sort of attachments to go out and do 3D mapping and this kind of thing. Yeah, and you you mentioned that uh, you don't have enough pilots. So, talk to me about the jobs. Like, are you seeing like hot hot beds? Is there a certain state or certain part of the country where there's more jobs than others? Not really. I mean, drones are the industry is really exploding, and every day, I mean, there's just things that you never thought about. I mean, I've got uh, and I'm learning a lot as well because. As I say, when a pilot signs up, I give them a call and thank them and just get chatting to them. And you always hear their stories. And something that is you know, never thought is uh, is ashes scattering. Um, and one of the this pilot told me, he said, I bought this plate, this distribution plate for my drone, 
and I'm, ch I'm charging $500 to go and scatter people's ashes. And he does like two or three of those a day, um, just draw, which uh, the FAI probably frowns upon dropping anything from a drone, but they're ashes. The other thing is is baby reveal parties. They they drop different color confetti depending on the uh, on the sex of the baby, uh, either pink or blue. And uh, so um, yeah, it's uh, the, there's that. Uh, it's, there's more things than just doing real estate and uh, roofing inspections. There's so much more now. And they've got drones, the power washing drones, like the uh, the uh, Aqua, uh, Aqualine drone, which can put out four thousand pounds of power pressure. And not move an inch backwards, which is pretty. So they now, as opposed to a guy that owns an industrial uh, pe uh, cleaning company, having to bring a, a, a cherry pickers in and a crew and everything, they just send a drone up and the drone just power washes the building. So there's all these avenues which are opening up. Um, we had one pilot that uh, was called to a gas refinery uh, because, and he had thermal and uh, a thermal camera on his drone and to find a gas leak. Um, and they paid him a fortune because it was they were losing a fortune every second. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you see a bunch of them. Like, wh where do you see the industry going? Like, where does it keep, you know, what's coming up next, you think, as far as, like, the usage, the usage of, of drones? Well, I think, you know, if you're just going out there to be a pilot, it's got a shelf life because autonomy is moving in. And so if you want to stack the deck in your favor, take courses in LiDAR, 3D mapping, data collection, data analyst, analysts, um, 3D mapping, thermal. Take courses in this. Become an expert in that because that's where the future lies. The drone, eventually the drone's going to do all the job itself. You'll always have the need for real pilots like, uh, I mean, uh, FPVs were really the cowboys of the drone industry um, and the hobbyists basically built, started with the model airplanes and then started building their drones. But since the advent of the, the the red notice with the rock, where he was running through, through the streets of Venice chasing a bad guy, and the the camera was following him every footstep when he jumped, and everyone, how the hell did they do that? Of course, it was an FPV drone. So now every car commercial you see is FPV drones where they're flying, the cars doing wheelies and the drones flying around it. Um, so that's a huge market. Uh -huh. Do you see, and you see, so you see jobs on the FPV side as well? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got, we've just taken on a new, uh, we've got our, our drone experts who know a lot more about the industry than me, which is uh, Chris Favell, who's been with us quite, quite a while, the drone geek. I'm sure you're familiar with Chris, everyone is. And so, so it's funny because we went, when he first joined the company, we went to the UAV Expo, which is coming up in Vegas next month. And uh, we went to this one. And a couple of years ago, and um, the the idea was we were both going to interview people. And I'm for, I've never been good behind a mic. I'm all right if I've got the guitar, that wall in front of me, which is the guitar. I can go in front of fifty thousand people, and I'm fine. But uh, I never to go to a mic is totally different for me. So Chris used to be a radio DJ. So when we did our first interview, I'm sat there with like a bump on the log, and he's just blah blah blah, blah. and I'm like, you know what? You do the interviews. You be the face of the droning company because you're real good at it. So he just he's now sort of become a real integral part of the droning company, and uh, and uh, he does his not only his articles, but he has this drones on the road series where a company like Dragonfly or Ascent will fly him into their facility, and he'll do a whole video uh, and written uh, sort of company profile, including flying their drones and this kind of thing. So. Uh, so we got the Chris with his drones on the road and also he, the, the articles he brings out, which is really good. And we've just taken on uh, an FPV expert because that's where we were lacking. And um, we've got a called Sam Carr. And Sam's an amazing FPV pilot. So we've actually given him a column, which just started last week. That's awesome. Well, I was just on the on the website actually uh, this morning and I saw you also feature like um, some video of the week. Um, and I think like the one I just saw was all like whales and and stuff so like you, there's still for guys like me who are on the cinematography side there's still like a creative element that you incorporate within um the the entire platform so i that i appreciate that that's good yeah well every every week we feature one of our pilots as the featured pilot of our week we have the uh and i always encourage the pilots to say look write a pilot story write your your story and 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 this and put something together for us and we'll gladly post it on the main page in pilot stories 
Um, and we also feature a video reel of the week. The video you're talking about is by uh, Joanne, Joanna. Uh, in uh, She's in, the ha- in Long Island, in the Hamptons, I think. But she does amazing work. That, and that video that's up there now, of the she flies over whales and sharks and manta rays. And just you should check out her profile because it's just absolutely amazing. And and she she's more concerned with sort of uh, selling to National Geographic than she is in doing sort of um, uh, you know drone work. She uses she does drone work, but not not the usual things you'd expect. Yeah, but, that, but that's interesting too, though. So she's not really into th- that type of work, but yet there's still value for her to have a profile on your on your platform. So that's good. Yeah, because companies like looking for footage, uh, they'll come across it. Because, and we ha- we're actually talking to her now to do a, a pilot story because uh, the people search for various things like footage of, of whales and everything else. And she's got some absolutely incredible footage, especially the manta rays. Um, so people search for that and then they approach her to buy footage for yeah documentaries and this kind of thing yeah and again from your on your business model i just want to make sure people understand like you don't take then a commission again on that like she just pays her her profile and and that's the end of that yeah and we 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 have an option where people can sort of pay for the entire year and get gets basically the whole year for a hundred dollars and it it works out that if we get you one job in the entire year it's more than paid for a yearly subscription so it shouldn't be too hard. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, where where can people go? Can you give us the URL? I mean, obviously, we'll put it down in the description, um, but give us the URL where people can find out about how to join your, your platform. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's just at www.thedroningcompany.com. And uh, if they want to sign up with us, they should read the go to the search engine and put in drone jobs. And there's an article I wrote there on on how to create a good profile how to, because uh, it's all down to your profile. If some pilots, when they first sign up, they don't put a headshot, they don't put uh, much information, they just put pilot part 107, and some of them don't put a video in, and they wonder why the guy five miles up the road is getting all the work. And I say, well, you've got, you're, you're still competing with other pilots. So I send them examples of pilots' profiles that do really well, and I always say, you know, add this, add that, until they get their profile into a, sort of good shape well and you should also share the website where people can listen to you play because like you're awesome you're really good at it <laughs> well if they just go to youtube and put in a heaven heaven and earth band if they use the ampersand as opposed to the word and the heaven and earth band they'll find about half a million videos up there can i ask you how that name came about um it the, the this sort of incarnation started off with uh, Jolyn Turner from Rainbow and myself. And uh, it was called Midnight. And then along the way, uh, it was my drummer at the time, who was Jay Shellen, who's now with Yes. He said, you know, Midnight's sort of very sort of 90s. Let's let's think of a different name. He came up with a name. He said, I've got a good idea for a name. And I said, what is it? Heaven and Earth. Well, that's pretty good. Didn't realize there was a movie out that he'd been to see the, the week before. So it wasn't exactly original, but um, but it, uh, it worked. And uh, so it, it sort of it sort of sums us up. We're, sort of, we've got, we're not just a straight heavy rock band or, a, you know, just a blues band. So we do, we do some sort of bluesy stuff, some harder rock stuff, um, even some classical stuff. So it's the two, you know, Heaven and Earth is somewhere in between. That's so good. Have you seen any of those um, FPV drones flying over like those major concerts as well? Have you ever had that? I haven't, not yet. But uh, that's another thing. I mean, uh, there's a, there's a lot happening. I mean, we've got in next month we've got uh, the remote ID thing happening where that's going to be made into into law. Um, and Bivlos, that's a huge thing. I mean, the FAA really needs to get on this because it's going to happen. I mean, there's no option. There's too much money behind it with companies like Amazon and Google. Um, and it's it's an industry where drone delivery and things like that. So um, there's a lot, of, a lot of changes happening in the industry and it's exciting. Yeah. Now, listen, I'm glad we talked because, you know, we're also talking with um, talking about uh, delivery with uh, DroneUp. I don't know if you're familiar with DroneUp. Um, yes. But they're doing the drone delivery for Walmart. And um, he was telling me he can't find enough pilot. Like they have the jobs, they just don't don't find the pilot. So I think um, you're you're providing that service of of uh, you know um, 
connecting those pilots with those jobs. So, uh, is there any other uh, any other tips or, or or recommendation you can give to pilots? Well, there's certainly. I mean, there's a, it's uh, just to give you an idea of the growth of the industry. When I started this, there was 150,000 licensed drone pilots for the FAA. Now, th three years later, there's over 380,000 registered pilots. So they're out there. Um, companies they can find dr uh, drone pilots on our page, but they just need to let people know that they're looking for them. With uh, companies as well, can also post jobs free of charge on our page, so that a company like Drone Up can go to a the top left hand corner jobs post a job and they can post a, a job which all our pilots will see and uh, apply for and all our pilots have a part their part 107 and in insurance because they have to have their part 107 for us to accept them and they they upload that we check it out make sure the face matches the face and the address and everything uh, although it's not visible to the public Awesome. Well, listen, I appreciate your time and, and I hope you still find time to fly once in a while because we don't want to, you know, be completely hands off. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love flying and uh, it's getting to the point now where I'm probably going to take someone on. Uh, I mean, I've got a few people working with me now, but someone to take my position and then I can take a bit more time for music and having some fun flying drones. Uh, that's great. Well, listen, we're, uh, we're really happy we talked to you. We're looking forward to uh, uh, hopefully talk more in the future and, and maybe we'll see you in Vegas uh, this, this uh, coming up month. Oh, we'll be there. We'll be there, definitely. Good luck with the uh, Arizona Drone Fest. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon, okay? All right, guys. Take care. Thank you for listening to U.S. Dronecast. For more information about upcoming episodes and to learn more about our upcoming Drone Film Festival, subscribe now and follow us on social or visit us online at usdronecast.com.